What's going on, everybody? Adrian Diaz here with Hasta La Vista Boss. Uh, in today's hangout, we're going to chat with Sean. Uh, Sh- Sean, I believe I, I said uh, I said it right, Sean Mars. Uh, he had some great, great success with his uh, uh, affiliate marketing journey. And uh, today we're going to find out some of his secrets, hopefully. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you have questions uh, related to... Amazon affiliate marketing. Uh, he apparently he's very knowledgeable. He's he hasn't done this like uh, from yesterday, so uh, he knows about SEO as well. Whatever questions you guys might have, drop those in the comments. And um, uh, yeah, let's get into this. I've started this with the wrong foot because I had to put different screens. But <laughs> this is the live streams. Uh, you know, it's always fun because you can always mess it up. <laughs> Sean, welcome to uh, to hasta la vista, boss buddy. Yeah, I mate. How's it going? All good, all good. Um, Thanks for having us on. It's like we were talking just about uh, just before pressing the button to go live. Like everything can go wrong, so it went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a few teething issues already on my <laughs> end. <laughs> Man, it's it's so funny. So, if you guys are in the chat, let us know. Say hi, so we can say hi back to you. Uh, Ryan is here. How's it going, buddy? We have Velin here on the chat on Zoom. How's it going, uh, Velin? Everything is fine, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if you have questions at any time, uh, you know, drop it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask um, Sean directly if you want. Um, and people in the YouTube chat, if you want to join us as well, there's a link in the um, in the Facebook group uh, that you can guys. Um, jump on on this stream all righty so let me come back to you oh, again there you go this is this is awesome <laughs> messing up again <laughs> <laughs> sean um let us know buddy uh like who you are like what do you do uh do you have do you, do you have like a day job or this is what you do uh full time uh yeah i do this full time now i used to be in the air force but i left in 2017 to just try and get this off the ground it took a lot of work, but I'm finally there. But um, yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm registered as a sole trader in the UK. It's just how legally you've got to do it. But um, yeah, I'm basically self-employed. That's awesome. What's wrong with you leaving that job? <laughs> yeah, oh, mate. Well, yeah, I ask, I ask myself that sometimes, to be fair. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I guess it's uh, it's one of those things. Um, uh, I, I can't remember when I, I read in this in one of the books. Uh, you're always going to have that kind of uh, thought coming back to you, like chasing you all the time. What the hell are you doing? That yeah. job is so great. You know, you should stay there. Uh, it happens to me as well sometimes. Like, I mean, I'm not yet free. I'm not a, I'm not my own boss yet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, it's a, it's a, it's, it's work in progress. But uh, yeah, I have that thought as well. Sometimes like when things are getting like tough, I say, you know, my mind says, bro, just stay with that job, man. It's 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 paying well. Stay with that yeah, job. Yeah, <laughs> just grind on. But to be honest, I kind of regret leaving so early when I did because I was paying us a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And I literally worked like four months of the year because I was on a deployable unit. Wow. And then I went from uh, being on a base with thousands of troops. So there was always something happening to literally the next day sitting in a room working on a laptop for 12 hours a day. Wow. So, that was a big shock to the system to be fair it took us a few months just to adjust to that yeah i can imagine i can i mean that's a question i ask myself now since uh, w- with this pandemic uh, this yeah. kind of gave me a little bit of a taste of what would be for me to work from home for the rest of my life yeah. um of, of course there's lots of good things um but uh at the same time i don't think i'm gonna be able to stay at home and work with my wife next to me or my kids running yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. going to be a pain in the ass. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's awesome. And the saying, I didn't realize how hard it actually is <laughs> yeah. um, working from home. Yeah. Just getting the motivation because your bed, your TV, everything's yeah. right there. You're not in a formal environment. So 
does take quite a bit of discipline to nail knuckle down and get on with it. That's true. That's true, buddy. Um, I mean, I was thinking there's a garden here next. I mean, he's not my gardener, unfortunately. But uh, if if I would start doing working from home, I'd have to have like uh, a shed or something in the garden. Yeah, just yeah, to go there and separate. go away. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> but I used to go to a local. It's not really a coffee shop. It's like a tea room just to get us away from homes to yeah. like switch. Try and get that switch in my head that this is work time. I need to crack on. <laughs> yeah, it's but, true. Yeah, it took us a while to get into the habit of just working straight from home, but finally there. Yeah, that's probably a good question to ask in in a little while. Like, how do you keep, uh, you know, how do you stay motivated? How do you organize yourself? That would be a good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let me welcome to the chat as well, Carl. How's it going, buddy? Welcome. Um, you probably know Sean as well. So if you have any questions, uh, let's try to make Sean spill the beans tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let me know how did how did you get into this stuff? I mean, I know you you had this awesome job. Um, what the hell happened <laughs> for you to uh, start looking into this? My friend from the Air Force who got me into it. We were basically he was my shift buddy. We were both SACs at the time on shift, and he was always on this website. And I just kept saying, "What is that? You're always on it." And he was like, "Oh, it's about making money online and SEO and stuff like that." So I started reading it and then just spiraled from there. Kind of became an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's so strange. Um, like I got introduced to it and literally from the first week, I was like, this is exactly what I want to do <laughs> as a job. Yeah, but, that uh, sounds, yeah, like, it sounds like we all have that kind of friend, huh? Like yeah, a little yeah, devil. Yeah, man. <laughs> Everyone, most of the people I know got into it through someone else. They didn't just randomly yeah. Google how to make money online or something. So one of their friends was doing it or they saw <laughs> something via a friend. Yeah, that's that sounds cool. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't think I no. I, the way I started is because my wife said uh, I don't want to go back to work, so I said, okay, what do you want to do? And then I started to ways to make money online, and that's how I yeah. started. Uh, but uh, I didn't had I had a friend who uh, got me into smoking, into drinking, and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, but, man, <laughs> that's just Air Force lifestyle, though. Yeah. Like, well, 2012 to 2017, I was pretty much drunk the entire time. <laughs> just part of the, it's a drinking culture and the job. So yeah, that was another sh shock. Be like being able to just turn up to work drunk and not want to care. <laughs> like after a night out and wow. after actually work when you're doing it for yourself. That's that's. Awesome. Have you actually tried any black hat stuff or you like um, you just jump straight in with white hat? Well, I'm f uh. I don't know how how long you've been on this uh, in this uh, game like uh, as a hobby it was late two th uh, 2012 late 2012 ish okay, okay. okay so you have you have some you have some years under your belt I've only started like um, two years and a half with everything so I yeah. I haven't been in the game for too long but uh, my approach to SEO and yeah SEO and marketing in general is I just wear the money hat. So basically, <laughs> what, whatever works for me, I need to buy a money hat and put it on my yeah. head because whatever it works, I'm going to use it. So I don't uh, as long as I'm not like uh, uh, breaking any uh, ethical code or stuff like that. You yeah. know, I don't I don't want to rob people. I don't want to harm people or, or any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's the same as me. As but, long as I'm not breaking the law, I'll try it. So yeah. if it's like going up and building backlinks. I've got no problems. That's doing it. Yeah, that. I have no no uh uh how do you call the uh, internal fight with the angels and little devils yeah, here on my yeah, shoulder yeah, I see I'm I exactly just go and do same. it <laughs> yeah even a lot of people who say the white hat when you dig a little deeper yeah they're, they're not they're, they're of course they're not and doing all kinds of stuff yeah you but, know um, how it is um as long as you build a link yeah. you're 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 just a black hat now <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, to break it, it down think, for you yeah. <laughs> by my definition you are some people say there's gray hat seo like kind of in the middle, but by my definition, that's not a thing. As soon as you've brought in the terms of service from Google or their webmaster guidelines, you're a black hat SEO. That's it. That's but it. it doesn't really matter these days. Mm. Like 4th of May last month, a ton of white hat SEOs got hit. <laughs> no. As well. Whereas at least back in the day, like five years, uh, three to five years ago, it was majority of the black hat guys doing automated link building and stuff who'd get slapped by the updates but now it's just 
<laughs> just don't care. No, I mean, you <laughs> can don't still... don't tell you anything about it. So to answer your question, I haven't done uh, Black Hat uh, too much. Yeah, I, I've played with. Uh, I've played with. Uh, I have a GSA. I'm not experienced oh, with it. Um, yeah. I'm not experienced with it, uh, but it still works depending what you're doing and what you use yeah. it for. Um, I've learned how to do negative SEO, not necessarily because I want to harm anybody, just yeah. because I want to kind of recognize if if that things happens to me, and and yeah, um, yeah just for academic purposes. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a diplomatic way to phrase it. <laughs> How long have you been? I'm guessing it's uh, so like GSA search engine rank. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. How long have you been playing with that then? Uh, I haven't played too much with it. It's just, oh, uh, right. uh, just a f very, very little. I mean, uh, oh. uh, when I bought it like two years ago, I bought the license for it, yeah. and then every um, everybody then I realized that everybody was saying, "Hang on a second that that shit doesn't work anymore so yeah i, mate, said, oh, that, I came yeah. late to the game what the hell but i never... used to use sir a lot <laughs> that was what i started the gsa toolkit when yeah. i got moved into seo but until like a week or two ago i had a ton of tutorials for it on my blog but i, I just got rid of them all were yeah. you on that forum or not oh, on black hat no i'm oh, on I... the gsa forum no i'm not on the gsa forum oh, no all right I, I never got into it i just follow the people who can actually teach me how to do the stuff uh, yeah. instead of instead of me trying to go out there and find the information i have uh, i'm around people who yeah. uh, like the guy yesterday clint butler uh, that i have on show um he's one of the probably one of the best uh, guys out there in yeah. black hand seo and what and what he does is very good um this is awesome the conversation i love it i hope you guys in the chat i love uh, you love it as well uh so we have here as well chris how's it going buddy j5 uh, uh carl says i'm writing and watching possibly not the best productive uh but had <laughs> to, <laughs> had to pop in to say Turn hi thanks for that carl. um ryan says this quarantine has really shown a lot of people how great working from home could be just trying my hardest to make it a permanent uh, reality now Cheers for that, brother. Look at this. Yeah, good luck, man. Good luck Become, with your projects. That's it. Just uh, learn from Sean. Uh, watch his YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, there's a link in the description. I'm sure you all know it, but if people watch the Cheers. replay, um, there's a link in the description. Sean has really cool videos about uh, his journey. Um, J5 is here. He says hello. Um, what he says? Chris says... Uh, Google so random and has no transparency. So what's the point trying to stick to their dumb yeah. rules? Totally agree. Yeah. They're, they're very big when they've all the, an update out these days as well. So you can't work out what's happening. Yeah. So just go black hat. That's what I keep telling people. Well, listen, here's the thing with Google. Google is a business. Uh, yeah. They have to protect their, their business. So don't expect Google come out. Don't expect Google, uh, John Mueller or any of these guys to come out and say, hey, guys, this is how you rank in Google. <laughs> if you believe yeah. that, you're just you're just too silly. They have a business to protect. So yeah. they're going to tell you something here in the camera. They're going to come on the Webmaster uh, Hangout or, or uh, on your displays and they're going to say, hey, do you know what? Uh, schema actually is um, nothing. Don't worry about it. We're not going to work with it. But then when you do your tests, uh, I don't know if you do tests, Sean, I'm going to ask in, sec in a second. Yeah, I test quite a lot. Uh, but they say, oh, schema, don't worry about it. You know, backlinks, don't worry about it. Um, you know, keywords in the uh, H tags, don't worry about it. If they tell you that and you believe it, you're a dumb ass. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. So, so even back when it was Matt Guts who was in charge of it all, some of the oh, stuff yeah. that they, they'd push out mm. in all the evidence literally goes against what they tell you all the actual data from the SERP. so yeah i learned that a while ago but yeah maybe maybe you're gonna t uh, maybe you can forward. teach us how to use gsa uh maybe you have a private uh videos on your youtube anymore, or something in my experience um <laughs> do you ha did you have sia with it the web 2 engine or not i'll just serve. no i can't remember what the setup was uh i can't remember <laughs> I can't uh, remember uh, you mention it. The web tools, I I can't remember having anything. Oh, all right, yeah. The straight out the box 
Sir doesn't really work anymore. You need yeah. Web 2s. And even then, I don't think that works these days. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably if you've been shitloads of backlinks to your Google stacks and stuff like that, buffer buffer sites, then... Yeah. That's, I mean, that's that's what I've seen works. J5 says here in the chat, I did Black Hat spam for years, but it's not good for long term. Well, I'm sure that uh, Sean will agree. You have to become versatile, you know? Yeah. Just can't just spam the shit of the, of the, out of the websites and hope it's going to work forever. <laughs> yeah. Mate. That, wait, that was part of the strategy back then, though. It was like churn and burn. You knew you'd get mm. hit. So you just smashed it and then let it die. You can sit on the next update. But it doesn't really work. The, the Penguin algorithm is real time now. So in Google's AI, you can literally take the spun content you'd use, you used to use with the GSA toolkit mm -hmm. and put, even put it into the free version of Grammarly. And it basically says there's all these errors. So Google will be able to tell that it's just random content that doesn't make yeah. sense anyway yeah. now. Whereas back then, they, they didn't have the hardware to do that in real time. So exactly. there was little little um, gaps you could exploit. Super awesome, super awesome. And, and now even now with the NLP and the uh, grammar, uh, grammat uh, how do you call it? Yeah. The grammar, ana analy uh, analyzing the grammar, you know, yeah. uh, if they see words uh, like they're uh, just out of the spinner, <laughs> you, yeah, you're not going to exactly. rank, you're not going to do anything with it. Makes sense, yeah. Like Google's <laughs> understanding of the English language at least is a lot better. <laughs> not one guy who kind of uses the SIR toolkit for... Uh, the Russian search engine. I always get Baidu, and like I always get the Russian and Chinese ones mixed up. But whichever uh -huh. one the Russian one is, he still uses Surf for that quite well. But for the English-speaking markets, I don't think it really works anymore. Sweet, sweet. Um, J Five says uh, he loves uh, Black Hat World. Um, Ryan says nice to see some familiar faces joining the stream. That's awesome, uh, Ryan. Carl says. Uh, Sean, been loving all your content uh, you've been putting out lately, smashing it. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Um, uh, J5 keeps his sites pure uh, white hat. So um, let me get back to uh, what you are doing uh, online, Sean. Like, yeah, yeah. what's your money uh, wh or where your money is coming from? Um. So traffic generation right now is organic traffic from Google in a, an affiliate blog and the links are majority Amazon. So it's basically Google traffic into a blog, push to Amazon affiliate program. And I'd say 95% of my income at least comes from Amazon right now. Um, I'm planning on diversifying moving forward though. I literally about an hour before I started the stream, I <laughs> uh, set up what I want to do to move forward. But yeah, after that, after this update, I've got to change a few things up. My old keyword research method's not as efficient as it used to be. So see what happens. I don't want to get back into um, display ads. Not necessarily AdSense, but something like Mediavine or um, Azoic or um, is it Ad Thrive, the 100K, 100,000 hits a month one? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really big. into ads at all, so I, I, I can't yeah. say. I haven't, I haven't done display ads for since like 2015, 2016, something like that. I just moved to affiliate and CPA. Mm -hmm. But I do want to get back into it just with Amazon slash net commissions in April. But again, I don't know if you've seen, I joined share a sale to try and diversify. And one of the projects, uh, one of the affiliate programs on share a sale, they just deleted the program. And I've had two commission changes on share a sale already. And it's been we're probably moving into the third week now, so that stuff happens there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going back to Amazon, get the get the higher conversion rate that Amazon offers, and try and make as much as I can to scale my um, display ad projects. How many? How many? Uh, so you you uh, I said I put on the title that you're making seven grand. Uh, um, yeah. um, from it's last month, it was just shy of six thousand five hundred US dollars, but I'm expecting that a dip because uh, last month the stimulus checks went live in the USA. Mm -hmm. So in one of my niches, a lot of people, like on the Amazon dashboard, if you look at what people are buying in the USA, basically bought a new rig for their job. It worked for me, though, because that website made pretty much double what I expected for that month. 
but I think it'll normalize between three and four grand for this month. We'll see what happens. That's still shitloads of money. Uh, <laughs> I will yeah. take that any day. <laughs> yeah, I can live on it, thankfully. But I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily living on, living on that right now. I'm just reinvesting. I'd say I'm trying to live on less than 1,000 US dollars a month. And then if I have anything left over the next month, I'll reinvest that as well yeah. to move forward. But yeah. pretty much it's all about scaling right now. Like I said before the stream, I was in... Um, August, I was planning on going traveling. I was going to go up to Iceland, Norway, Estonia, Germany, um, and then like across to Asia and settling Australia. But with the, the virus lockdown, it's kind of, that's not happening anymore. So I'm just re <laughs> throwing all my savings and everything I got in the scaling ready for next year. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, how many websites are creating this uh, uh, income for you? How many properties do you have? Um, I've got... Fast. Um, wait, the majority of the income is from two domains. One's from August last year and one is from October 2018. I've got a really old one that was hit by the Google updates. So I pretty much killed it. And then it also got hit by the Amazon commission change in April. So it's making like less than $200. I've got a site from January that's pretty much dead. It's just got a ton of issues with the Google update. It's got that index and bug with Google as well. The site I launched in May, um, literally, like I said before, uh, probably an hour before we started the stream, I was going over its data. I checked its um, coverage tab in Search Console, and it looks like it's holding its index, unlike this the domain from January. So I'm going to keep going with that. And um, I'm going to start another one next month as well. Nice. So how many sites I just said there, that's how many I've got. With plans to do another one in a few months as well. <laughs> it's so, like yeah, never busy, stopping, busy, isn't busy, it? Busy, busy. <laughs> Once you start, not, nothing can. Uh, once you start, you're like a locomotive, right? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. easy to Just stop. Don't stop for anybody. Keep going. That's it. But a lot, a lot changed with how I build my sites. Just purely with last month. Um, I don't know about your niches, but with mine, there's a uh, like YouTube, Amazon, Reddit, Quora, stuff like that is dominating the front page of Google for my old niches. So I'm kind of the site I'm starting in next month. It's all going to be outsourced content-wise because I have no idea about that niche. That's I awesome. found one writer already who's very good. And um, another one who, um, his content's due on Friday, so his, his content will be due in two days. His first money site article, but his 500-word test article was very good. So I've got high hopes for him as well. That's awesome. That's another thing I, I'll um, have to ask you when we uh, answer a couple of questions here from the awesome people in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Alex Cocker, how's it going, buddy? Uh, says, hi, Sean. Have you uh, have you any suggestions for backlinks? Uh, I know you you don't link uh, like mentioning it much, but would you recommend a company like the uh, the I think it's DFI Links? Yeah, it's a uh, Scottish fella. What's his name? Uh, never heard of them. I never heard of that company. But a lot of them. Like I, I used to use one of the biggest brands out there and then they delivered a PBN link and it was a $300 link. So that's why I don't like to give brand recommendations. Mm -hmm. I used to use, that was for my guest posts. For my niche edits, I used to use Rhino Rank. And even the two people who recommended I try Rhino Rank don't use them anymore. They said it's gone downhill the last few months. Right. So I'm testing a new niche edit service. <clears throat> I'm testing a new... Um, guest posting service that is brand new. It launched um, a few days ago. And the manual web two guy, he, the, the one I used to use is still really good, but there's another competing service that's about 30% cheaper. So I'm trying him to see if it's comparable. Wow. Yeah, uh, Israel is, have you tried Israel stuff? He, he no, I've never heard of him. Cool. Uh, what, is it a backlink service or? Uh, well, uh, he's he's on Facebook. I'll, uh, I'll share the link now because I don't have it. Uh, right in yeah. front of me but he he's a he's a very 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 successful affiliate marketer well at least that's what i see and um he has his own uh uh pbn network and yeah. uh he he just a few days ago like a week ago or something like that he made it uh he put some he put a, a, like a service for backlinks uh so i'll i'll put that in the chat so or maybe in the description when I finish, so you yeah. can guys check it out. 
Um, yeah, like if if they're not on YouTube or Reddit, I don't really know them. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or certain forums because I, I I don't use Facebook. I don't use. I, but like if they send that set up to push my content to them, but as a user, it's very rare that I'm at, like. I don't know the last time I logged into Twitter or Instagram. <laughs> and now and then I log into Facebook to talk to family, but that's it. So yeah, I've yeah. never heard of that guy. Well, if you, uh, Alex, if you want uh, links, uh, DFY, uh, they, that company used to belong to uh, Charles Float. So very, very uh, known guy in the SEO world. So um dig a little deeper on that guy man like, <laughs> i would not recommend that guy's services yeah google search and read what happens <laughs> well he's uh he's out of the game now uh apparently he for whatever reason he i don't know he got stressed too much or whatever but he sold the company to this uh new scottish fella um yeah. so i don't know but the thing with the links is that if if we say uh, if we recommend you some someone today alex this video is gonna go like two months from now. That company is gonna be crap, and yeah. the video is still gonna be live, and you're still gonna go there and buy stuff because yeah, we recommend like, it here. So, like I said with the GSA toolkit yourself, the, the, until a few months ago on my blog, I had stuff. Even I had red text saying I don't use this tool anymore. People are still like buying through the links and stuff. So, I, so I just, that's why I deleted it off my blog. It's rebranded it all, and then. Um, on their forum, there's still, I get questions from posts I made on the GSA forum like five years ago saying, oh, you said this, what did you mean? And it's like, that was five <laughs> years ago, but SEO moves very quickly. So um, uh, I used Rhino Rank until, I think, uh, the, the first week of lockdown in the UK. I think that's when I uh, put my last order in and the links I got, I was happy with, but people are just saying, don't waste your money these days. So... That's how quickly it can change the link services I provide. Uh, uh, I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, th that's the thing with the, with the backlinks uh, companies. You know, I I've used Rhino Rank as well. Didn't do much for me, but uh, I know some other people said, like Carl here in the chat says that he he has been getting some good stuff from Rhino Rank. As um, I might, I might try them out. I might throw one um order with them. Like I said, every order I've had with them was good. It's just people. Even the two guys who have used them a lot longer than me said they don't use them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, question for Sean from Carl. He says, um, what's your long-term uh, goal? Uh, sell a big site, keep a portfolio of websites. What's the game plan? Um, That's a good question, actually, because since last, pretty much the last two weeks, uh, a lot of stuff's changed. So... I am trying to do a lot of smaller sites moving forward. So there'll be maybe one or 200 pages. It just opens up the buyer market a lot more if I want to sell them rather than doing one massive affiliate site. Um, that if it's multiple, even because of the, the monthly multiples, if it's a massive site earning a lot of money, it makes a buyer pool really small. So if I do smaller niche sites, um, overall, my income hopefully will be similar, but it should be easier to sell them because instead of going for maybe six figures, it'll go for a, a, like a lot less. So that's my strategy moving forward. And something I noticed with the domain in um, August, that I started in August last year, at least one guy has scanned it with Ahrefs as well. It's, a, it's got like 300 articles on it. So there's this brand new site, Rocked Up, and it's pretty much targeting every single one of those keywords now. So it's like <laughs> frustrating. So making a smaller site, it limits the risk of that as well. So if someone, if someone does find it and scan with Ahrefs and takes the keywords out, I'll only have competition from a very small number of my pages moving forward. But I've got a roll with the punches. Simply my whiteboard's up there with my thing <laughs> to move forward with. But see what happens. That's my current plan, my current thing to move forward anyway. That sounds good. Um, here's a question from me, Sean. Um, yeah. Building so many websites um, in such a short time, how the hell do you decide for uh, a niche? Uh, let me let me quickly say one more thing. Do yeah. you do you uh, create a website around a product or uh, around a problem or around uh, a topic, how, how do you decide? I'm out there, mate. 
I didn't think what you asked us. I heard build it around a product and then Zoom calls. <laughs> so I didn't think what you said after that. Yeah, let me let me ask it again. It seems like um, the connection is not um, the greatest, but so how do you how do you build the the site? Like how do you decide for a niche? Do you do you uh, look for a product and then you you build a website around the, the product or uh, uh, around the topic around the problem? Uh, what's your what's your process there? What uh, how do you approach this? Uh, with the With most of my sites, it's my personal interests and hobbies. So I base it around the actual hobby. So it gives you room for expansion and the different products within it. Um, like I said, this one I'm starting next month. I don't know anything about it. So I'm out outsourcing all of its content. But with my my historical sites, I've been able to sit down and churn out a ton of content. Some of them I've been involved in for five to six years. So just the, the knowledge in my head. It means I haven't got to go off and research for hours to knock out an article. But I can't think of an example of a hobby, but it's basically I wouldn't just choose one product on Amazon and cover everything about that product. It's more about the hobby and the different ways you can use that hobby and okay. uh, cover a number of products. But but two of my sites, actually, they pretty much cover two products on each site, but it's purely because of the hobby. Um Each of them have one like a dominant brand where everyone knows you've got it's like iPhone. I know Samsung and stuff like that, but a few years ago everyone just went up with iPhone no matter what the competition. And before that it was Nokia. So there's always just this dominant brand, and then it's basically which one of these products from that brand do I need for the way I want to do this hobby. And um yeah, that's pretty much the two main sites. Similar situation for both. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a question that many people Uh, I, I've seen this on Facebook uh, and I'm sure you've seen this on Reddit as well. Uh, how do you choose a niche, right? So uh, I yeah. hope I hope that helped some uh, some people. Yeah. My out. advice would be to choose a hobby that you already know a lot about. Um, one, one of my, the site I started last year, it's pretty technical on some of the, the sub niches within it. So if you know the hobby as well, you can sit down and just insert the jargon where it makes sense as well. Right. So if someone is reading it, they understand, you know, that hobby and your advice is um, basically worth reading. Some of the stuff I've tried to outsource with that website, you could just tell they didn't know what, what the, the, the writer was on about. It's not for the writer, but with that website, I, I churned, I think it was 600,000 words of content myself. But it sounds a lot, but I didn't really need to research much of it. And I'd have to Google a very specific specification or a feature or something like that. But the rest of it, it's just stuff from, from my head. Cool. Coolio. Mm. Let me go quickly to the chat. The chat is getting busy. Yeah. Uh, Sue, welcome. How's it going? Um, Fearless. Is that Chris? Is that Chris? He says, my boy, Sean from Black Hat World. What's going yeah. on, bosses? <laughs> Do you know Chris? Uh, from, from the forums. All right, because uh, uh, I know a few different people from the uh, Black Hat world. Yeah, we had uh, we had Chris a few weeks back. Uh, that was awesome uh, to chat with you, brother. Thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks for oh, being Chris, here, Sue. Uh, the Australian dude. Uh, no, yeah, Chris. Uh, yeah, Chris I don't is. Think the... He's on the forum, but uh, uh, I know him from YouTube. He's a good lad. Yeah, uh, quite like this his content. Right, right, right. Yeah, we we ch we were chatting about you, uh, Chris. Uh, not Chris from Fearless, the other Chris. We were chatting about you, lad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a good yeah, lad. Yeah, check uh... his channel out. Shout out to Chris. <laughs> Some good stuff on there. Yeah, you let me know, Chris, how much he paid you for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to, I want to, I want to give that as a service. You know, giving shout out to people. <laughs> Offer it as the side income. <laughs> Uh, Ryan says, uh, for someone who is still getting his first few sites up and running and not earning any money yet, what suggestions would you have for pushing through uh, that first sandbox period before seeing any results? That's a really good question. And, um, even if you just, I know it sounds like a lot when you're first starting, but even if you just mashed out 100,000 words of content or something like that, After six months or some or something like that, you should have actionable data from it to revisit it and get motivation. That's something I've seen other people on 
ready for the music to be and then put out a ton of content and then they'll burn out but they keep their hosting. They'll um there's like a few brands have started doing where you, you get a massive discount if you buy 12 months of hosting straight away. So on just start on Reddit and stuff like that, that's a, a tactic a, a lot of people are doing who are just starting out. So for a month, they'll be highly motivated, smash out the content, then they'll probably want to just like again for a few months. Um, when it's the first site though, I know it's frustrating. Literally, I, I mentioned it, well, I've, I've spoken about it before. I had two of my best friends sit down with us in literally side by side and I told them word for word what I do from keyword research to basically monetizing the site or everything and they've both gave up already on their blogs and I made like three and a half grand from my um, affiliate blogs when we did that so that's kind of motivation that I should do what I told them to do and both of them gave up because they've not seen results as quick as they wanted and it's like it's been three months for one of them so you know it's frustrating but yeah it's, it's, it's one of those on things take a break and see what happens yeah it's it's one of those things and one thing you should definitely keep in mind uh who has this ryan uh, yeah ryan and anybody who starts a website in or uh, uh tr you're gonna try to build websites to make money online just don't don't overthink it just go out there create a website put articles out there uh and keep learning learn and apply yeah. learn and apply you know look at uh, yeah. uh sean he he knows a, a shitloads of stuff about uh black hat and and all that just by learning and applying uh you know learning on the forums applying that stuff to his websites and uh, uh you see the results now a few is uh, a few years later yeah definitely agree with that you got to build up your own positive feedback loops because so many people will comment on my videos or on Reddit or forums saying, oh, I bought this ebook and it's like that guy makes some money by selling that ebook. He doesn't necessarily make his money from his websites. So that happens yeah. a lot as well. I have a big so problem with that. Uh, and go I have... data. Yeah, sorry, Sean, sorry. Carry on, sorry, buddy. Uh, and I'll finish. I was just saying, you've just got to try stuff and go by the data you get from the experiments. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, I was interrupting. Is the the connection is a little bit bad? I wasn't sure if you finished. Uh, and yeah, I have a huge problem with those guys who are selling shit that they say they do, but yeah. they actually make more money from what they selling you, right? So yeah. if you are out there, you know, uh, step out of my way because I'm gonna I'm gonna name and shame you. <laughs> yeah. Made the drop shipping industry so bad for it. Like people buy some ebook on drop shipping and then they leave a comment on my video and it's like I've never ever did drop shipping ever. Like I don't know the <laughs> first thing about it. How can I offer you advice? Yeah. They just seem to think make money online is all one thing and there's lots of little specific things in that. I've never tried drop shipping. I'll, I probably never will. And I still see a few comments and it's like I don't well, you do should, that. Mate. You should never say never, story. you know. <laughs> It's what it froze again, mate. Yeah. Um, so Carl says here, I'm seeing some better results from indexing over the last couple of days. That's awesome. I haven't heard uh, Google saying anything that they fix it. Um, it's going to be probably like this for a few oh. more months. I don't know. <laughs> mate, I'm crossing my fingers. I hope my site from January recovers from the stupid indexing bug. <laughs> I've spent like maybe three grand on it right now and it's pretty much dead. Wow. Google to fix that index and things. So I hope I see the same as that guy in mind fixes itself. But that's time crap. Will tell. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of a bit of a thorn in my side right now. That website. But yeah, I'm just I'm just ignoring it and moving forward with other projects. Yeah. Uh, Chris says here. Chris um, says that uh, he had uh, some uh, absolute crap from Rhino Rank. Again, you, you, I don't know. It's you might have some. Yeah. Success, you might not have some success. It's just one of the one thing is for sure. You need to go and try it for yourself. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Just don't don't listen to us here saying, "Oh, it's not gonna work." Go and test it. Yeah. Um. Says um, Alex Cocker has another question here. Would you do web? Uh, okay. Uh, would you do web 2.0 links from Fiverr, or is it a complete no no? <laughs> Um, believe it or not, <laughs> I, I haven't tried them myself um, two weeks ago. I thought... Uh-oh. 
think I think Google is. Sorry, Sean. I think Google is listening, and uh, they decided to, uh, you know, mess up with our stream here because. Uh, <laughs> right when you were saying what. Uh, <laughs> Right when you were saying what what to do about this, um, the stream went. Of course. <laughs> Say again. Uh, yeah. So basically, I use like guest posts in Niche Edit to pass links. they like the authority links. And right now, I use uh, manual forum posts for diversification. But I did want to try manual web 2.0s, and the only place that I could find where a guy was willing to do manual web 2.0s with unique unique articles was on Fiverr. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. If it gives her a T, the service, and they type manual web 2.0s in, it'll be off. But I can't stress enough, you need, in my opinion, you'll need a unique article on that uh, property, or I don't think it will index. Right. But yeah, I'm not using web 2.0s right now. I do plan to try it in the future as diversification for links, but got too many things on right now. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, it's one of those things that... When you, when you have too many things to you want to play with and uh, only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> I do something. I was sleeping six hours a night and yeah. then work the rest of the day. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy indeed. Yeah. Um, I uh, I use uh, the web 2.0 just like uh, kind uh, just like uh, Sean was saying to build these those foundational links that you need uh, for your website. So straight away as you put your website up there. Go and get some social profiles, um, Web 2.0s, uh, just for the those first foundational links. That that's how it's called in SEO. Uh, but don't don't build links from them. Uh, like, don't go nuts with it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't use Web 2.0s as your main link type. Yeah, that used to work. I used to actually do that as, as part of uh, T link building, but it's not not like it used to be. Unfortunately, it's been very quick. Literally, the sandbox was like six weeks to two months back then as well. So you yeah. could see results a lot quicker back in the day. But so much has changed. It's it's a different ball game. It's definitely true. Um, yeah, uh, people see in the chat says that uh, the screen was frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah that keeps freezing for me as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I every time that someone or one of my guests needs to say something important, Something happens, <laughs> and I, there's someone from YouTube watching with I'm, a freeze I'm button. I'm telling you, <laughs> there's no coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, Carly saying here, kind of uh, uh, related to what you were saying with your big plan, uh, he wants to uh, sell his first site, but only for uh, one hundred thousand pounds or dollars. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a sweet uh, thing to do, Carl. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, good luck with that, buddy. I'm sure you're going to yeah, achieve that maybe in a year or two. Yeah. That's a good exit, though, as well, because that builds up a lot of knowledge, and then you can take all that money, because that's a lot of money for start the capital on new domains. You can outsource a ton by links, what I want to do. But um, <clears throat> I was considering selling sites the other day, but I think I'll keep them now and just slow time scale. But see what happens. I keep changing with, with regards to selling my sites, but currently I'm keeping them. Yeah, cool. Um, Alex uh, has another question. Thanks for all your questions, guys. Um, I didn't even get to my questions for Sean, but you're more <laughs> important than my questions. Um, so uh, where is Alex? Alex says, uh, where do you get your writers from? Upwork, ProBlogger? Uh, um, I, 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 uh, I used <laughs> to use Upwork a lot, but that's a lot harder now. And I've got two writers on Upwork I still use. One of them, uh, basically because of the virus lockdown being released, one of them's going back to their job in two weeks, I think, and the other one is going back to their normal job sometime next month, so I'm going to lose both of them. Um, I'm using buy-sell texts, and I, I was using iWriter a lot, but I'm kind of trying to move away from iWriter and go towards buy-sell texts right now. But again... I'm kind of shilling my own channel, but I've got a, a video idea. But it's not an idea. I'm doing it. I've got <laughs> basically I went to Fiverr and ordered articles just to see the quality. And I'm going to basically make a video saying this is the quality I got from this gig, this gig, this gig. And I'm going to do buy sell text as well and show what I got from them. But um, writers are a nightmare. <laughs> the price. 
Uh oh, another important thing. thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna pay out now, basically increase the rate, I pay my writers and just grit my teeth and get on with it. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, I get my writers from Upwork uh, as well. Um, uh, How long does it take you to get, like, say from posting the initial job on Upwork to saying this is a guy or girl that I'm gonna hire or try? Well, it's like 40 applications per one person, at least right now for me, it's a nightmare. <laughs> the, the way I do it is, um, uh, I, I mentioned this in a few videos on other places. It's, uh, I go out there, uh, put the application. Um, I can't remember how, how long it takes to like come back to me with uh, everything. But once yeah. I find someone and I see, okay, this, uh, the only thing that interests me is, uh, if he's responsive, uh, and um, if it writes this in English, that's the only thing I, I, I care about. Right. Because if it's not responsive, then I'm going to wait for my articles and say, hey, uh, John, where's my articles, mate? Yeah. And he's not going to ask you. I'm actually... problem as well with people yeah. flaking on it as a ghost and, and just not getting back Exactly, to yeah. So that's the most important thing for me, to be responsive and to write uh, yeah. just this in English. Because uh, then I take them out of Upwork by uh, saying something like, hey, um, do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna be traveling, so I'm not gonna be able to check my uh, emails. Uh, blah blah blah. When you have the articles, shoot me an email at uh, at this address. And once I have their address, I go and just work with them directly. I take them yeah, out of uh, the difference uh, uh, of the Upwork fee. Yeah. Someone suggested uh, suggested that that I try that as well, but it's just finding the writer right now. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I just went. There, um, Wait, I went from Upwork to iWriter, and now I'm with Bicel Texts. But see what happens with this Fiverr content. The stuff that's been delivered so far is not the best, <laughs> as you'd expect from Fiverr. But see what happens. Another thing I do as well, uh, I actually have uh, a meeting with someone on Monday, a student that um, wants to write for me. Um, yeah. So maybe I'm going to pass uh, your details. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. His details to you, and uh, you can have a chat with him. He doesn't have any experience at all, but right. he's native, and uh, I'm going to show him what I want him to do for me, and yeah. probably that will be the same thing for you. Um, and I'm, he's going he's gonna to be much cheaper than uh, than most people on Fiverr anyway, and uh, he yeah. speaks perfect English. <laughs> do, you, do you actually find the benefit of native speakers? Because the two best writers, I've ever worked with from Upwork. One was from Kenya and the other was from the Philippines. And I've had people from the UK and the, the United States. And the, in my experience, I haven't been as good as people from elsewhere. Well, to be honest with you, the, uh, since we were talking about Google and how smart Google is and all that crap, um, I don't I don't really care where they are from, and uh, yeah, just uh, as long as the grammar, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I know that the, the stuff I do. I know the content, uh, the content is going to be sometimes a little bit weird in terms yeah. of how how they phrase the the text, but that's that's kind of fine for me. You know, I'll probably pay yeah. someone to proof proofread it for me if it's like one uh, important piece of article on my website, but if not, I don't really care that much uh i just put it out there and if it uh, if it ranks yeah that, good I mean, that's exactly what i do with my work content like, i don't care if they're from the uk or anything and just quick proofread and post it yeah <laughs> um alex says here in the chat good idea on the social profiles and thanks boss yes boss no problem <laughs> um chris from fearless says uh chris phelps uh, that's his full name, maybe you recognize him uh, now. He says, um, I'm guessing you're a retired GSA sir then. Um, Sean used to run the coolest control tests with that tool. That's awesome. Yeah, the case studies I used to do, yeah. I used to do a lot of testing with her back in the day. <laughs> I, yeah. miss, I miss that version of Google, man. It was so <laughs> easy. Like, just make kind of burn sites and, and like, Two to three weeks, two to three months later, can be making it like a thousand dollars and trying to burn. Definitely change now, though. <laughs> That's awesome. There, um, are you? Are you? A, uh, do you know uh, a, a guy called Kyle Roof? 
No? Oh, it's uh, freezing. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's come back at for me as well, but it's loaded <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, no, I don't know. I don't know that person. Okay. Uh, uh, he's uh, one of the smartest SEOs uh, out there, and uh, he he participated in a, in a contest uh, uh, ranking a website in a particular area in, in the US. And yeah. um, just to make this very, very short, uh, you can look it up later if you want. It's really, really cool. Um, he ranked a, a, a website, number one, in the maps, uh, they 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 got the knowledge panel as well and uh, he ranked for a website for the keyword rhinoplasty plano which is very uh, competitive yeah. uh, he ranked number one for that keyword as part of that uh, contest uh, seo contest the the that's not the the good thing or the amazing thing the amazing thing is that website was completely written in uh, latin lauren ipsum <laughs> there was no english on that website uh, yeah. uh, just the keywords in the right places yeah uh, Good it, on yeah it, it was awesome if you, i mean um i'm part of a uh, group called img internet marketing that gold where we do tests uh, on google where we test uh, this kind of stuff what yeah. works what doesn't work so that's that's awesome maybe you want to check it out if you are uh, if you if you miss that part of uh, testing you know that's that's awesome yeah do you know that guy was it a wix competition I remember reading about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know who you mean. Actually, I, I, what you said, I don't know his name, but I can repeat on the Wix competition when they published the results. I remember it when you said it wasn't it like had zero English um, text on it. But yeah, mm. that, that, that is an, an achievement, though. Um, <laughs> wonder how he did it. <laughs> well, you know what? That was smart on part of Wix because they got shit loads of. Uh, promotion out of that competition yeah yeah i remember when it happened yeah. but um yeah there was a few even that one was very good but even some of the stuff i didn't win what did manage to do it was quite impressive <laughs> if i remember correctly yeah but, um yeah i wonder what the link spend was uh, uh, for his off page and stuff like that just uh yeah that's that's the that's the problem because they didn't make it public uh yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can remember reading it on yeah. black hat world there was a lot of people saying but how much did he spend on the backlinks for this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be impressive just that you can do it. That would be it would have been awesome to to know what's going on. Yeah. Uh Pete <laughs> Pete says here in the chat. Uh well no, not this one. This one. Pete says here in the chat that um Sean's broken wall is interfering with the <laughs> with the Wi Fi <laughs> signal. <laughs> oh man, it's nearly fixed now. B and Q's open again, so fix oh, it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, lockdown stopped in the UK, so how much I'm did you fix it? How much did you have to wait in the queue? <laughs> oh my god, not as bad as I've seen the news about the IKEA queue. The oh hours. the IKEA is oh yeah. goodness, that I don't know. It wasn't that long. Um uh, Chris uh, Phelps here from Fearless says, uh, Upwork here, I hire around 10 people to write the same article. I choose my favorites, then hire them to a separate job. Let them yeah. run for a few weeks and keep only the best. That's really good uh, tip there. Yeah, yes. good strategy for Upwork. Yeah. Um, Upwork definitely went downhill, unfortunately. But yeah. that, 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 that is, that, that's probably going to be the best strategy you'll get for Upwork moving forward. Because yeah. you just got to ask the wide net and hope for the best and even even when you do that they they they're gonna stay with you for a while then they're gonna find something better they're gonna leave yeah. you so you have to start all over again <laughs> yeah 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 because when i used to do it a lot that's one of the strategies people do people who are brand new and didn't have any feedback on their upwork account as a freelancer I'd work cheaper and then as soon as i had the feedback but i don't blame them i do the same but as soon as i had that initial five star feedback they'd go to a higher <laughs> price point gigs yeah, but the same thing still seems to be happening. Uh, that's awesome. There, let's see what uh, says here. Rodikla, Rodikla. I'm not sure if that's how you say. Um, Sean still does awesome case studies on Buso. I'm not sure what Buso is. Uh, Build a society. It's another forum. That's probably the best one in my opinion for internet marketing forums. Build a society or Buso. People call it Sam. Okay, cool. It's cool stuff. Um, Alex Cocker says, Sean, do you use an about me page uh, no. on your site? Do you think it's important to have one? Oh, 
you know, so much about them. Time time in, they like pushed it, and a lot of people think you need to have it, but it's not in any terms of service. Same with the contact us page. Someone was asking us about, about um, do I have a contact us page a few days ago? And it's not in any terms of service, so I don't have it. I don't want random people emailing us, and I'm, I'm too, <laughs> I don't even have enough time to um, do my job right now. I'm so busy with different things, so I don't have contact us or about me pages. Yeah, cool stuff. I have, um, let me quickly share my screen with you. If, by the way, if you want to share the screen or show us anything, uh, Sean, you, you, uh, you are free to do it. So this is a website that I'm building as a, as a yeah. case study. And this is the about page. Uh, I, I looked, I mean, I looked into the, uh, what uh, uh -huh. they called is one of the buzzwords of the year, uh, yeah. probably the last year. Uh, EAT and yeah, uh, yeah. so if you have a page like this on your website where you have a person behind it uh, even if it's a uh -huh. persona it doesn't have to be you right um, yeah a lot of people just grab a stock image now <laughs> I'm, I'm helping someone up the cat world and I was like is that really you you know like <laughs> no I'm not um, it's some photo of somebody off up, uh, Unsplash yeah a lot of people do that but <laughs> if you uh, you know that EAT thing yeah. when People start saying, oh, you need to add an about us page. If you trace that back, it's just off some guy's post on, I think, I don't know if it was Search Engine Journal or Search Engine Roundtable. It was one of the blogs. Yeah. And he wasn't even saying it as if it definitely works. And then it just spiraled from there. People kept saying, oh, this will fix it. And it's like, no one. <laughs> <And>, um, <laughs> well, my domain was hit in September 2019. Yeah. I was busy with another site. So I didn't even look into it between September 19 and... The 19th, I didn't add an about us page. I didn't do anything like that. And it recovered in the next update. So I just <laughs> went down and then came back up. Yeah. So, yeah, I, just, I don't do it. Well, it's it's uh, it's up to you. I do believe that um, I, I don't, I have no idea because I, I mean, I didn't look deep into this. Uh, I don't know if EAT is part of the algorithm, but uh, one of the things I that think it will be, it but will just not be, with yeah. an about us page. So yeah. like, to me, EAT, like, um, I'm not sure if I'm meant to talk about this in public. This <laughs> is a strategy emerging from the black hat community where the lot of professional niches where it'll be medical niches with doctors mm -hmm. and they'll pay a crazy high rate for the content just for a medical article. And then they'll say, oh, do you want to use this as a port, um, one of your portfolio things? So then they'll get an official link from that doctor's personal blog. And that's how they build an EAT. But realistically, the link from that doctor's blog to their money site, it'll mm -hmm. be a lot more expensive than the article they paid for. So that's something people are starting to do to work around that. So you pay higher for the content, but you get a link free a lot of the times. But um, I don't do that. I don't work in mental niches. Yeah, it's... Um... Uh, I I don't know how they will how an algorithm will understand. Uh, what the, I mean, how you how you are an authority, uh, just yeah, by reading yeah, exactly. the uh, by the by reading the about page, as you can yeah, see here. That's my point exactly, mate. Anybody yeah. can have an about about page. Yeah. you don't. Don't have to get a degree or anything like that to add an about page on on the internet. And here's the thing, um. Like in my case here, this is the, the this is my about page about this website, and I have links to LinkedIn and to the Facebook page, which are business yeah. pages. So uh -huh. maybe they can try, uh, maybe they can uh, trace that, and they'll go to uh, from my about page. They'll go to LinkedIn. Maybe they have a uh, somehow they can read what's going on there, and they say, okay, so this guy that's behind this uh, website. Um, He's a professional in this industry, bro. I don't know how they would yeah. do that. But yeah, there's another yeah, way for yeah. you to become an authority. You don't have to be like a doctor necessarily for you to uh, be trusted. Like I have some problem with varicose veins, for example. Right. So if I build a website about how I uh, yeah, deal yeah. with Your the varicose veins, yeah. that would be another way for you to build trust in Google's yeah. eyes, uh, the EAT, right? <laughs> Uh, keyword competition comes into it a lot as well. Like a lot of the people who got hit by medic, it was the actual keywords were going for. And then they basically just put, um, is it Mayo Clinic and the. 
And the other one, I, I forgot his name. Uh... Ooh, uh, hopefully we're gonna get that on the replay because you were about to say something very interesting. <laughs> oh, I did a freeze again. Uh, I was just saying about medic update. It's not important. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Pete here in the chat says, um, "Where is Pete? Uh, how would Sean find long tail key uh, queries with minimal relevant results?" for a new site without uh, using paid tools? Uh, I don't use any paid tools anywhere for keyword research. Oh, well, other than um, keywords everywhere, I guess it's a paid tool now, but I don't use any of the SaaS tools. Um, I'd use keyword shitter, but today I've been trying to use it and it's offline right now, apparently, so hopefully they'll fix that. I just use keyword shitter and get a ton of con uh, seed keywords, like ideas, and I'd use answer the public as well but if you go on by your intent keyword shit it tends to be better in my experience and if you go on informational the answer to the public seems to be better but after that mate it's just a lot of work manually going through it and looking for patterns and checking it um like one of the, the things people start to find out about kgr is google understands search intent so in title search used to work i used to use that in my own method back then so, but now it's not necessarily you don't need the exact key phrase in your article to rank for it. So in title search, doesn't really work. It's just manual effort right now, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't used the uh, all in title for some time. So some time. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore, mate. People yeah. say it does, but it doesn't. I don't know. It's uh, I've I know that uh, they've kind of uh, depreciated some of the. Um, uh, Google operators uh, like site or like links, um, so they're yeah, not they're not using uh, they're not working as they used to. But uh, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I haven't done. Yeah, there used to be. A, um, I think it was like link colon and the site to show you all the links that were pointing it apparently. But yeah, I didn't know about that back then when I was doing that <laughs> stuff. I was sort of cashed in big time. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't know about that back then, but that definitely doesn't work anymore. They're, they're literally just turning them off so that the modifiers don't work as anymore. That's it. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a few other operators that you can find the links um, pointing to your website, but oh, yeah. with the naked URL stuff. Yeah, like that. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then, even then though if you if you use an anchor text that doesn't work so it can only give you a small thing yeah. or you use hrefs or something like that yeah definitely i mean oh yeah that's true yeah um all right the do you think google's product suggestion snippets mark the end of affiliate marketing no way oh, is that, if that's a thing from the other day i think it's going to be a big hit because a lot of people on just start talking about that and it's uh i don't have you seen that the, it's the new product snippet where it basically says best mobile fun for gaming. I think a screenshot is. It's yeah. basically putting the product in there. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a pain. It's definitely <laughs> going to be a hit. That's, um, that's why I'm kind of uh, looking into a little bit of few ways to do this yeah. uh, money yeah, online same. thing. You know, affiliate marketing. Uh, this website that I just shared with you guys, it's for lead gen. Um, and it's crazy that the site is not even built and I have leads coming into it already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Where are you selling your leads? Like a lot of people keep asking me that. It's like, I don't do lead gen. I don't know any lead gen agencies or anything. Yeah. No, I mean, depend. You, you'll you have to see the niche, but um, uh, you can charge, uh, de again, depending on how you wish to set it up. Um, I'm going to charge uh, 25 pounds. Well, I'm going to try to sell it. Uh, it's 25 pounds per lead if the customer doesn't convert but if right. they convert i would like to have uh, anywhere between eight or ten percent of whatever yeah, they sure. uh they buy oh so you're going direct to the like you're selling it to yeah. the company yourself right yeah right, right i get yeah so what it uh, basically my site is now ranking and is getting leads so uh -huh. i i reached out to a few companies that i know and say hey guys uh hey sean um I have these leads. Uh, these guys are asking me to for training because it's it's about training. Yeah. Um, do you are you guys interested in more customers? What do you think they're gonna say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, so I say, uh, you know, this is how much I want. If they want to pay, fine. If not, I'm just gonna go to the next one. Um, 
But yeah, that's definitely much more money, but the work is a little bit more hands-on. Uh, just until you set up everything. Once yeah. it's set up, it seems like uh, it's a little bit on kind of auto autopilot. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Chris says here, I think EAT is bullshit, uh, but I just throw up an about uh, in contact page because it takes 50 minutes and just takes that thing off if there is a small chance. But uh, it's not a factor, Chris. It's, it's definitely not a factor, but it's it's uh, it's one of those things that is included in the um uh, uh the rate uh, the rate is um uh how do you call it sean uh google rating uh guide or something okay. like that i can't remember now where they will go through all these things when they look at your website to, to oh, like a checklist thing. yeah they have yeah, like yeah. uh they have a, like a checklist and they will go through it and say, okay, this website has an about page. This is why I have this. And the more those boxes you tick, the, 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 the higher score is going to be in Google. Uh, guideline rate. I can't remember now the thing. Yeah, that, I know what you mean, but that's just something tech SEOs push to try and sell their services. I think mm. there's a lot of people on there to preach that and, they just sell SEO services rather than use it on their own websites. Everybody but, um, has something to sell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Right? So we yeah. all have to feed the families. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Pete says here, but uh, are they the Glen Gary leads boss? I'm not 100% sure what he say there, uh, uh, Pete. Fix is here as well. Uh, how's he going, fix, buddy? Yeah. Hi, Sean. He says, I just finished work and jumped on. Sorry if I, if this has been uh, asked, but what are your thoughts on the future of page speed influencing rankings? This one. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've got some really small websites. Some of my older ones are where I built them. There's a, like a lot of plugins that clash and stuff and still bring traffic in. I, I do use, I do try and get my websites as fast as possible, but um, I don't think it's as important as people say. I did a side view the other day on one of my videos and I click a link on it, it takes like 10 seconds to load. <laughs> and uh, the issue is, I think with page load speed is that the users are more likely to just click back and go to the next website. Because even if I'm just Googling something and it's a website, I'll get frustrated and say, oh, I'm not, not using this site or a different one. Yeah. But as a ranking factor, I don't think. Actually, um, Google, I can't remember if it was John Mueller or someone else on the team that confirmed time the first bite isn't a ranking factor in Google. They tweeted it out a few months back. So they've actually said at least time the first bite is not a ranking factor. But I don't know, I don't know about full page load speed. Yeah. But, um, Yesterday I was I talking to... Overrated. Oh, sorry. Go on. Same thing. There's rank uh, speed is not a ranking factor. It was maybe... At the beginning, yeah. when they implemented, like uh, if you guys remember, HTTPS used to be a ranking factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon as everybody complied and now everybody has HTTPS, then they dropped it. It's not a ranking factor anymore. So it doesn't necessarily help you in your rankings. Uh, yeah. Clint was saying as well that if you have your website is ran it's uh, loading in three to four seconds on mobile then you you that's all you need to know don't look at those stupid things in page insights yeah. like uh the numbers like 88 percent or 80 or 100 yeah, or yeah. abc and all that shit. don't look at that <laughs> it's not yeah, important yeah. I, I totally agree with that <laughs> um i was talking to leon for uh, leon Nangus, he's a youtuber as well in this niche and he was saying he tries to get his sites to load in three and a half seconds that's with ad code as well most of the minor for what? sites are <laughs> less than a second for me but if you've got ad code that's going to slow your site down anyway. Yeah. But well, yeah, I, I totally agree with everything you just said. One of my, uh, a guy in from forum, he wasted ages, basically, you know, the Google page speed insight. He wanted them both above 90 and he literally wasted days doing that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. mate, that's done nothing. <laughs> like, I think he was 85 on mobile or something, he wanted to put 90. And it was like, you've just wasted a week of work just for a number to make it go green. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so uh, that's that's why that, that's what I uh, the way I see it as well is it's it's probably 
um, a, a little bit like a filter now if you want it's not a ranking factor it's a filter so if your page loads like 10 seconds like Sean was saying then you're gonna be filtered out you're not gonna be anywhere in, on the on the you know page one or anywhere near um, yeah. but I don't think it's gonna it's gonna be a ranking factor as soon as everybody's websites they're gonna be kind of decently rank uh, uh, in terms of speed they're gonna drop that as well just like the with the HTTPS yeah my view yeah yeah I, I agree even now I don't I don't think I think it's already been dropped in my opinion so Rodik class says here that looks like Adrian disagrees with a lot of st stuff Sean believes in <laughs> well <laughs> I guess you could say that uh, great minds thinks alike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, man. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I we can disagree. I would disagree. I disagree with some stuff with Emilia from Emilia Gardner's channel, uh, yeah. but uh, it doesn't matter. I still uh, love her uh, a lot, and you know we can disagree, but that's kind of what makes these discussions awesome as well. You know. Yeah, your niche comes into play as well, though. Like with what you'll see, for example, with medical stuff, costs is it specific algorithm from google that just polices medical content someone in some random other like if you're writing about your your website for example to my knowledge google doesn't have a specific algorithm that's doing anything for that whereas if you go for medical you'll see different things happening if you go for payday loans the payday loans uh, up there yeah. from a few years back you'll see different stuff happening there so it depends on your niche what you see that's true Hundred <laughs> percent. Just to kind of uh, go back to the point Rodikla was saying, I, I agree. Hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, Fix has another question. Um, got one more. My new site less than a month, and, and new post less than a week. Just ranked number one. Is this a fluke? I I I don't know. I don't. Maybe not. Hopefully not, man. Keep doing that. <laughs> um, <You're a> millionaire. <laughs> no, I don't think it's a fluke. Depends on on what. Um, on what you're doing there. I mean, depending on the competition, depending on how good your on-page SEO is, uh, you know, uh, if you do Very the right common. things, yeah, if you do the right things, you should be uh, like... It's very good if it's fresh domain, though. That's very, very good. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen that for a fresh domain. Look, I'm gonna I'm going to share with you, uh, fix quickly my... Uh, my ranking for the legion pa uh, website so this page here was um this page here where is it is this one or is the other one so this page here was somewhere on 200 position 200 oh yeah. and oh this one here look it was in position 200 and all of the sudden boom position 11 and the page was uh uh I, I put this page on Google Search Console on the, uh, when is it? Uh, on the 20, 31st, so less than a month, right? So you're doing something well there. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Try and work out how you did it and duplicate it. Yeah, that's, that, that's that. true. Make, a, make an SOP out of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sean, I have a question. Uh, my question now. Um, it was awesome to have all these conversations. By the way, it's been one hour and fifteen minutes. This is awesome. How long I can have you uh, here with us? For how long? Uh, let's just keep going. I've got nothing on tonight, cool. so let's just keep going. Cool. I'll make food later, but I'll hold off. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I'm gonna make this uh, maybe another fifteen minutes, guys. If you have any more yeah, questions, yeah. drop those questions in the chat. Um, and here's my question for you, Sean. Huh? Uh, how do you, um, how do you, uh, I forgot my question. It was about how do you organize yourself? Uh, how do you work on all these many projects? Like, uh, uh, what keeps you focused, I guess? Um, so although I've got a lot of sites, I usually only work on one at a time. So like historic, like one of my sites, I haven't even published an article since September last year. And I've got another one. Well, I don't think I've published an article since 2017. So even though I've got multiple sites and multiple projects going on, I usually, I personally usually only do the content for one at a time. So 
when I was writing content until like two weeks ago when I took a break, I was just doing that content for one site and the, the freelance writers were doing everything else. That's awesome. Uh, do you, how many, how many people do you have in your team? Like, uh, and what's the process? Cause, um, just before the lockdown, I was having, uh, I've created an SOPs, uh, for my processes, written SOPs, videos to train the VAs and everything. And I lost the job. Then everything went, you know, downhill. Yeah. I couldn't pay my guys. That's, that's so many people, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know because with buy sell texts, the who I'm getting my content from now, it's not like Upwork. You don't bid. It's a managed content service. I don't know. Just a little bit of history on that service. So Natasha, who owns it, she used to just be a writer on Fiverr, and then she had the the, the most popular Fiverr gig um, for the writing niche. So she started her own company and she basically vet the writer and then she'll bring them into her team so i'll just send her a surfer seo template and say i need this article and then one of her writers will finish it and i get it sent back so i don't know how many people she's got working for her um i've got two on work but like you said with lockdown i think it was last month i had I don't know about eight or nine people just on Upwork, but because of the lockdowns being lifted, people are going back to their jobs. So that's down to two now. And like I said earlier, this time next month, I would have lost both of them because they're going back to their normal jobs as well. Right. Cool. Um, uh, what's this? Is? Fixes in the chat. Uh, he's been ha banging his head uh, for months with the pet site. So uh, I don't know. Uh, do you know what fix uh, have this is one of the things that i suggest people to kind of have when you start uh when you get into this uh digital marketing space have two projects or three projects uh not running at the same time but keep one on focus and two on the side and every time you get bored of one of them or every time that you you seem like you're stressed about one of them you know, focus a, a little bit on time on the other one. Um, this happens as well when when the updates hit uh, some websites, then you're gonna lost. Uh, as I've seen someone uh, kind of having a, a depression or something uh, in one video I was watching. Um, I can't remember what it was, but because it got hit by Google and that was the only thing they they were having. That's the only website down, the only property. Yeah. Uh, so have a few projects you know like i have the youtube channel i have this legion uh, website i have the affiliate website uh i know it's a lot of shit to do but <laughs> uh it keeps me motivated it keeps me always active always uh in enthused about what i do just to touch on that quickly as well mate um one thing i see because i do more black hat stuff with links and a lot of people reach out and I'll say, oh, you're probably going to need links for your keyword competition. And because they've only got one website, they're scared to lose it. So they don't try links and they'll just keep wasting time. Yeah. It's like, you're never ranking these keywords unless you build backlinks. And then, so if you've got two sites, you can basically say, oh, I'll, I'll risk sacrificing this one. And I'll just focus on one that I'm not building links to for now. So there's that element as well. And I see that a lot where people have one site and they won't risk building links to it. Yeah. That's um, that's the story I see on Facebook all the time. Um, it's the same with Reddit. Like, <laughs> not on Reddit now, thankfully, but it, it used to be very bad, especially on what one what particular subreddit. Cool. Um, talking about backlinks, do you want to take us through your process, um, uh, Sean? Like, let's say you this new website that you're gonna build now next month. You're saying uh -huh. a month or so. Walk us through what you're gonna do if you want. Uh, not going into details like where you're gonna buy your stuff and all that, but yeah. like, what's the process? What uh, step one? What what kind of links you're gonna build? Step two, um, step three. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the the main page I'm gonna backlink for this new website is it's one thousand monthly searches and the product price is uh, wait. There's di there's slightly different. Verts. If you think of an iPhone, how there's like the the iPhone. Pro and the i the cheap one, but like so it's like an entry level version of it. But the article is going to be about that, and they're, they're usually around one thousand five hundred dollars plus or minus three hundred dollars depending on the. Uh, 
version. For all, I'll order them straight away. But a lot of people say or think, oh, you should do that because the website is brand new. But the delay on the services, so it's going to be a month before I get that link back because I've got to do outreach and stuff anyway. Um, the niche edits and the guest posts will be linking with not exact match and anchor text, but will be keyword relevant. And then I'm going to build manual forum posts. I've already got a guy who does that for us, and they'll be niche relevant and just generic. So stuff like click here or read more about this to dial uh, to dial the anchor text profile. And the exact link count for niche edits and guest posts, I'm not set on yet. It'll definitely be three, might be more because it is a very profitable keyword from the look of it and rank it. But I'll probably do one blast of link building for that. And then I'll let it sit for three months or something just to see how it responds in the SERPs before I build any more links to it. And then I'll basically, I've got a list of keywords by search volume and commission. And I'll just move on to the next one and pretty much do the same. The second page, actually, it's not as high as competition. Uh, the competition's not as high. So I can't remember which video it was on, like I mentioned the other day with mine. I usually go for DA32 ranking websites because I know I can beat them from my experience with my backlinking strategy. With the second keyword I'm backlinking, I think the highest DA relevant page is like 27 or something like that. I'm just going to with one. I'm not sure if it'll be a guest post or a niche edit. It'll just be one of one of them, and probably ten manual forum posts as well. And that, so, like, it's not a set strategy for every single page. Got to take in a uh, competition into account and adjust. Right. But that's right. basically what I'm going to do from next month. Right, right, right. Yeah, I hope that's helpful for some people who. Uh, never build links or they're interested in how to build it and I'm sure that one uh, on the replay is gonna be even clearer because uh, we have this issue with the internet um, yeah. again Google is listening so that's why they don't want us to spill the beans <laughs> uh, but um, thanks for that Sean uh, do you yeah, no do you um, let me ask J5 first question and then I ask mine do you still recommend Amazon Personally, I, I, I'm going to build my next site built around Amazon. Uh, I know there's, there's always going to be positives and negatives, though. Like with share sale, I'm having dramas, and I'm, I've been with them for less than two, probably starting the third week now. And I've had one company just pull their affiliate program totally and do slash their commission. So I think it's going to matter where you go. It's just because I'm an affiliate, I've got zero control over traffic and zero control over my commission. It's just something I've got to deal with. But with Amazon, the uh, conversion rate is insanely good because it's Amazon. So I'm basically going to... I'll tell you... So I'll just read it off my whiteboard. Next month, I'm starting that, which is a, um, an Amazon affiliate website. Probably going to throw a few grand into that because I want it to be... It's going to be like the second generation of everything I've done historically. Um, the site I started in May, the 1st of May, it's a display ad site with the um, indexing bugs someone mentioned earlier on. The site from January is having a lot of problems with that, whereas the one from May isn't. So I'm going to start publishing content on that again. But the new keywords are going to be second gen keywords. And I haven't started the next one yet, but I'm messing around with Pinterest. I'm learning, trying to work out how to choose Pinterest keywords. I want to do a site based around predominantly articles targeting Pinterest keywords. If it gets traffic from Google, great, but if it doesn't, it's just diversification. So that's the next three sites I'm uh, going to be working on. Coolio, coolio. Do you do you have your own SOPs uh, already in place or you just, whatever uh, project you're have, going to have next, you're going to start everything from scratch and... Uh... It's the standard operating procedures, is that what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like for article formatting and stuff like that, I used to use my own templates, but now I literally I just use Surfer SEO and paste some basic stuff in, and Surfer does the rest. And I just say, I need this article. It did take, with buy sell texts, it did take a little while to explain exactly what I wanted because they're not used to using Surfer. But now um, those, bugs, that, those issues I end up. So, Surface saves me so much time if you're trying to outsource content. <laughs> yeah. You press a button and it just builds the template for you and you're like, sweet. <laughs> if you want new though, because Surf is like $100 a month. 
there's a few options. It doesn't make some basic keywords, but you manually have to copy them into your template. So it does take a bit of time. But I, I, I used to do that myself until I was aware of Surfer. I used to use SEO Hero, the free version. But it just takes like 10 to 15 minutes to build a template out. But um, yeah, other than that, I don't really have a set way to do everything. Like, like I said, with link building, I've got a basic thing of uh, keyword relevant anchor text from guest posts and niche edits and diversification from manual forum posts, but then I adjust that for competition as well. So there's a lot of variables with how I build my sites. Sweet. Um, uh, if you have more questions, guys, drop them now. Uh, another few more minutes and uh, I'm going to let Sean to have a nice uh, brew. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> um, <I'm> dry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm having uh, I'm having here uh, green tea and. Uh, oh, which one? Yeah, well, I can't remember which one is it. Uh, oh, man. I'm smashing the Twinings green tea with peppermint right now. I'm addicted. To I that, love so. it. Yeah, this is peppermint with uh, green tea, but it's mixed. Like I have one bag of peppermint and the other one with green oh. tea. Yeah. Mix them. Oh, I need to try that. That's a good idea. I've never yeah. done it that way. <laughs> I always buy uh, the infusions, but they're insanely overpriced. No, it's delicious. It's not worth the money. <laughs> no, because the <laughs> thing is, sometimes I don't want to have uh, mint in my green tea, so I you yeah. can oh, choose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that's cool. Um, Jay here says thank you both for the tips. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Jay. I hope it was helpful. Um, yeah, fix. Yeah, let me put the question uh, from Fix, uh, but yeah. I believe you kind of answered that. Even he says that. Uh, have you had any success with um, anyone else outside of Amazon? Share sale, ClickBank. Um, you know, CPA, uh, cost acquisition, PFLine, stuff like that. I used to use them. Um, there was one called AdWork Media, or because a lot of them have very similar names to each other. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to use them when I did Churn and Burn. I used to do Churn and Burn with Amazon Kindle pages. So I'd have someone ghostwrite an ebook for me. I'd post it on Amazon. So I was leveraging their DA90 or whatever their domain strength is to rank my ebook quickly. And I'd sell the ebook via Google traffic. Um, I did Black Hat YouTube with. Um, years ago with beauty CPA offers through, can't even remember that network's name, but right now I am focusing on um, Amazon. Oh, I did AdSense as well, but AdSense, it wasn't really stuff like um, Azoic or Medialine back then. You literally had AdSense or the Bing version, whatever they're called. So they were your two choices, so you never made much money. <laughs> right, right. Um, here's one last question for me, Sean. Um, yeah. And this is going to be, uh, take as long as you want to answer this, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm interested this is one of the key, uh, elements in my opinion, when, when you, if you want to build a successful site, of course, keyword research and all that, but, uh, when it comes to site structure, uh, and interlinking, can you share, uh, share with us a little bit, how do you structure your website? And how do you interlink? Uh, in, um, in, in yeah, yeah. I, I don't do silo or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I literally, if I'm writing an article and I can uh, internally link to another article that's relevant, I'll do it. I, I don't care about breaking silos or any of that. I don't buy the whole silo thing. Mm -hmm. um, I just literally internally link where relevant in my articles, and that's it. Sometimes cool. I will go back if, for example, say, I've built a ton of backlinks to one website, uh, one page, and it's already ranking. It's got quite a lot of link juice on it. If I build another money page around an Amazon product, I will go back to the first one and internally link just to like do a bit of link sculpting. But I don't do silo on or anything like that. Um, one uh, uh, thing that I want to ask you about is like, huh? do you link from? Uh, let's say you have a page about, uh, I don't know, microphones. Mm -hmm. Are you going to link from that page to a, a web page that's talking about webcams? Uh, no, uh, it'd have to be relevant. Like right. it'd have to be something about that specific. It's not like set in stone. It's, it's literally just what I do. I'm basing it off data right and I haven't really tested it. Right, right. 
Cool stuff. Uh, things, fix. Thanks for showing up here, brother. Thanks for uh, your questions. Yeah, my uh, for checking in. Your top man. Enjoy your day. Uh, the rest of the day as well. Hey, let us know. By the way, let us know. Is the baby coming or what? <laughs> He's gonna be a daddy. Um. So let me quickly see. Uh, I had another more question for. Shump, I forgot what was about. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any more questions related maybe to content, uh, maybe to what else do we have in here? Let's see, uh, about f do follow, no follow links, uh, I don't know, guest post, any, any technical stuff like him, how many affiliate links can you use on the page? Whatever questions you might have. Uh, oh, it's frozen. Oh, it's frozen on my side. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. If you if if you want, you can refresh it, uh, Sean. We can wait for you uh, a minute or two, just uh, so we can uh, maybe close this uh, episode decently. No, I can't hear you, no. Yeah, Alex says uh, here, my side is working. Uh, yeah, that's it. Look, Sean uh, just left the 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 meeting. He can join it, uh, us in just a second. Uh, it's always uh, like that when you talk, uh, when you do live streams and people <laughs> and people want to uh, know good knowledge. The bad people from YouTube and Google they they're gonna interfere <laughs> i still can't okay oh, st you can't can't hear sean okay i don't know what's going on there let's wait for him for another second but how do you guys hear in the chat how do you guys um um interlink how do you guys uh uh, structure your websites. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Sean, I don't know what to say, buddy. Let me see here. <sighs> testing, testing. Seems to work. Man, that would be a shame if uh, if I can't close this thing up like properly. Can you hear us? Oh, -ho! can you well, see us? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Man, I'm the same. I can hear you talking, but I can't see you on my <laughs> screen. I can see you on YouTube though. Oh, okay. But like, it's just on Zoom. I don't know if it's crashed or what's happening, but I can't <laughs> see you. Man, that's a shame. I mean, uh, at least I got you back here just to hear your voice. Maybe we can close this thing up um, oh, yeah. and leave it. Call it the day. Maybe we can chat another day for sure. I would love to have another chat with you at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, let's close this up. And, uh, you know, if, do you have any tips for us, um, Sean, uh, people who are building websites now and they don't have any success yet what um, what do you won't give up that like i know that's a basic thing but the amount of times i failed before i, I broke the one thousand dollar a month mark is insane and so many people give up uh, early just keep going on reddit as well i made a video about this i see a lot of people say oh i'm gonna give up i'm not making any money or traffic and link their website and you check it it's like maybe just in the sandbox give it a few more months right that's uh thanks thanks for the tip there and it's a shame that i couldn't get you to talk about your uh, your plans for the uh, uh nomad uh, digital uh digital nomad stuff uh oh, it's on hold oh, because man. of the virus it's on hold <laughs> until next year anyway that's a shame yeah um, but yeah thanks uh thanks sean for 
uh, accepting the invitation and sharing yeah. all this knowledge with 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 us That's here. That's on, man. It's been fun. I actually quite like this way. Chat, chat to the guy in the chat as well. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. I'm not gonna hear us. Yeah, maybe we can. Uh, you know, maybe we can uh, uh, do this more often. Um, I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, thanks everybody here in the chat. J5, uh, Alex, uh, Fix left already. Uh, Reb, uh, what was that? Rebecca, uh, Ryan, uh, who is this in here? Rodicla, sorry, Rodicla, Pete, Chris. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't mention everybody. Um, so thanks again yeah, for watching. Cool. Bye guys. Uh, thanks for uh, showing up here for your questions and everything for your likes. Um, you know, stay focused, everybody. And uh, remember, we're going to get rid of that boss, all right? <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>